What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Dan Tam Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, October 18th, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or a iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Oscar winning actresses Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Lawrence are going public against the abuse they have encountered in Hollywood. Witherspoon and Lawrence were among the women to discuss their experiences with sexual assault and objectification Monday at the Ellie Women in Hollywood event following multiple sexual assault allegations against producer Harvey Weinstein. Witherspoon said, according to People magazine, this has been a really hard week for women in Hollywood, for women all over the world, and a lot of situations and a lot of industries are forced to remember and relive a little of ugly troops. She added, I feel true disgust at the director who assaulted me when I was 16 years old and anger at the agents and the producers who made me feel that silence was a condition of my employment. She shared without naming her assailant. She also added, I wish that I could tell you that it was an isolated incident in my career, but sadly it wasn't. I've had multiple experiences of harassment and sexual assault, and I don't speak about them very often. Lawrence recalled how she was once told to lose 15 pounds in two weeks during her early career, according to USA Today. The actress said that she was asked to do a nude lineup with five other women, then told to use the naked photos as an inspiration for her diet. She said of the experience, I was trapped, and I can see that now. I didn't want to be a whistleblower. I didn't want these embarrassing stories talked about in a magazine. I just wanted a career. The star declared, in a dream world, everyone is treated with the same amount of respect. But until we reach that goal, I will lend my ear. I will lend my voice to any boy, girl, man, or woman who does not feel like they can protect themselves. Whether Spoon Lawrence's stories follow Weinstein's expulsion from the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Science and his production company, The Weinstein Company. The producer is accused of sexually harassing and or assaulting multiple women, including actresses Gwyneth Paltrow and Angelina Jolie throughout his career. And in a related story, Roy Price, the head of Amazon Studios, resigned Tuesday after a producer accused him of sexual harassment, studio representative said. An unnamed spokesperson told CNN the resignation came five days after the studio put Price on a leave of absence over the allegations. A representative confirmed the news to the Los Angeles Times. On Thursday, the man in the High Castle executive producer, Isa Hackett, told The Hollywood Reporter that Price made lewd comments to her during a cab ride after they promoted the series at Comic-Con in San Diego in 2015. Hackett said that the comments continued after the cab ride at an Amazon staff party that night. Shortly after The Hollywood Reporter report, the studio put Price on leave. Hackett told The Hollywood Reporter that recent allegations against producer Harvey Weinstein inspired her to come forward with her experience. She says, It is said over and over, and it sounds like a cliche, but we desperately need more women in leadership positions in Hollywood. There's a culture of harassment in Hollywood, and we need an infusion of new and diverse leadership, not just including women, but gay people, people of color, people with disabilities, people with the full spectrum of life experience. Amazon Studio tapped Albert Cheng to run the company into in the interim and cancel an event to promote its new shows this week in London. On Saturday, Price's fiance, writer Leela Feinberg, called off their November wedding in reaction to the allegations unnamed sources told Page Six. Ron Howard announced the official title for the upcoming Star Wars standalone film about a young Han Solo on Tuesday as production on the project has wrapped. The filmmaker tweeted alongside a video of himself talking to fans before he unveiled the film's official title. Hey, hashtag Twitterville just wrapped production, so here's a special message. Hashtag Star Wars. He continued by saying to the fans out there, I hope that you've enjoyed the pictures that I've been sharing, referencing to the various onset photos he has posted from the film over social media. Uh, Howard says, can we even say the name of the movie? Then asks before he is handed a cue card for what appears to be Star Wars character Chewbacca. The cue card, when flipped over, reads, Solo, A Star Wars Story, a title similar to the one used in Disney and Lucas's film's previous spin-off film, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Howard said, smiling conclusion, I'll see you next year. The font used for the title resembles the same font used previously throughout the series for its entries such as The Empire Strikes Back and The Return of the Jedi. Solo 
will star Aiden M. Reich in the title role made famous by Harrison Ford, along with Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian, Amelia Clark, Woody Harrelson, and Tanny Newton. Howard took over directing duties on the film in June in place of filmmakers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, who were booted off the project over, quote, different creative visions. Despite the change in directors, the film is still expected to be released on May 25, 2018. Bohemian Rhapsody director Brian Singer has showed a new onset image of Rami Malik singing as the late Queen frontman Freddie Mercury. Singer wrote on Instagram Monday alongside an image of Malik raising his fist into the air on stage while portraying Mercury. Couldn't help myself and had to post this iPhone pic. Bohemian Rhapsody, scripted by Anthony McCartan, with Queen members Brian May and Roger Taylor serving as music producers, is a biopic that will follow the years leading up to the band's Live Aid concert in 1985. The rest of the cast includes Downtown Abbey star Alan Leach as Mercury's personal manager Paul Prenter, Ben Hardy as Taylor, Gillian Lee as May, and Joe Mazzello as John Deacon Deacon. The bassist and composer handles Queen's financial dealings. Mike Myers, who famously performed Queen's song Bohemian Rhapsody during an opening scene in 1992's Wayne's World, is in also in negotiations to star in an unknown role. Bohemian Rhapsody is set to arrive in theaters on December 25, 2018. Riz Ahmed may potentially star in Netflix's upcoming film adaptation of William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Ahmed is in talks to star in the lead role in the film, noted The Hollywood Reporter. The project is being written by Mike Leslie, who penned another Shakespeare classic from, for the screen, 2015's Macbeth, that starred Michael Fassbender. Jim Wilson is set to produce. Netflix's latest version of Hamlet will be taking place in modern-day London amongst political and economic uncertainty, Deadline reported. Ahmed is best known for starring in the Star Wars spinoff Rogue One and in HBO's The Night Of, which earned him an Emmy Award for Outstanding Actor in limited series or movie. The actor is also set to star in Sony's upcoming Spider-Man spin-off Venom alongside Tom Hardy. And speaking of Netflix, the chief content officer Ted Sarandos said Monday that the streaming service plans to release 80 feature-length movies in 2018, a number that would dwarf top Hollywood movie studios. Uh, Variety reported, and as Sarandos is saying, they range anywhere from the million-dollar Sundance hit all the way up to something on a much larger scale, said in an investor's interview about Netflix's third-quarter results from 2017. Netflix is already being the, to put out the bigger budget fare with such as Bright, a $90 million thriller starring Will Smith set for release on the streaming site on December 22nd. Netflix's plan to release 80 films in one year could prove to be one of the most ambitious undertakings by a movie studio in today's market. That line points out that the number averages to a new new movie every four and a half days. Meanwhile, bigger, more established movie studios are not coming close to 80 films per year. Slay reports that in 2016, Fox released 16 films, Sony put out 22, and Warner Brothers had 23. And the four studios under the Sony banner released a total of 38 films. But Sarandos isn't concerned that supply will outweigh demand. He says people will see, start seeing the potential for this big movie initiative. Oscar-winning actress and singer Cher has joined the ensemble for Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. Deadline.com reported her casting, but said few details about, about her role. Cher tweeted Fernando, referencing to a song by ABBA, the Swedish pop group upon whose songs the movie musical Mamma Mia and its upcoming sequel are based. Uh, a separate post from the iconic entertainer reads, Just went through two dance numbers, everyone's great. The tweet features a photo of the 1970s style platform boots. Returning for the follow-up are the original film stars Meryl Streep, Julie Walters, Christina Baranski, Amanda Siegfried, Dominic Cooper, Pierce Bronson, Stellan Sosgar, and Colin Firth. Newcomers to the cast include Andy Garcia, Lily James, Alexa Davies, Jessica Keenan Wynn, Jeremy Irvine, Josh Dillon, and Hugh Skinner. Cher and Street previously co-starred on Stuck of You and Silkworth. Sacha Patrice says she lost 37 pounds during her time on Dancing with the Stars. The 21-year-old actress updated fans on Monday's episode after sharing in September that she gained nearly 70 pounds over two years due to the hormonal disorder um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. She said prior to her performance, we're halfway through the competition, and I've lost 37 pounds. It is really magical. Patrice went public about her struggle with the disorder on the ABC reality competition's September 26th episode and said at the time she was down 15 pounds. She told viewers the show was aiding in her recovery. 
Isar said, I'm feeling like me again. It's not an easy road, but being able to focus on getting myself healthy again and the fact that I'm seeking results, getting better is all I can ask for. Patrice dabbled during her Roomba with partner Gleb Shevchenko to kiss the girl from The Little Mermaid on Monday, but was ultimately eliminated from the competition. Shevchenko praised the actress in subsequent Instagram posts. The dancer wrote Monday, I want to thank my great partner at Such a Patrice 27 and my wonderful Ad Dancing ABC family, and especially all my loyal fans for the support throughout season 25. As always, it was the most memorable experience. He also added, I'm so proud of at Sasha Patrice 27. She really wanted to learn and has worked so hard. So she was a dream partner. I'm gutted this I'm gutted this journey is over, but it was great. Well, it lasted. Hashtag team A team. Patrice is known for playing Alison De Laurentiis on Pretty Little Liars and will reprise the role in an upcoming spinoff, The Perfectionist. Khloe Kardashian shared a sweet moment with boyfriend Tristan Thompson in pregn- amid pregnancy rumors. The 33-year-old reality star smooched Thompson in a new photo on Instagram Monday following reports she's pregnant and expecting her first child with the 26-year-old NBA star. She captioned the picture for her 69.4 million followers, My Love. Kardashian posted relationship advice for new couples on her app Chloe with a K earlier in the day. She advised her fans to develop a mutual respect with their partners and focus on the positive in their relationships. Uh, the star wrote, I think with any relationship, the key is to always have respect for one another. There are no winners in fighting. If you win, that means your partner loses. So that's not really a win for you, is it? She also added, no matter how old or new a relationship is, I believe in always praising your partner for the good that they bring and add to your life. It's so easy to focus on the negative, but once you start criticizing one another, it's really hard to get out of that rut. Kardashian and Thompson were first linked in October 2016, following their respective splits from James Harden and Jordan Craig. People reported in September that the couple are expecting their first child. A source said at the time, they are absolutely thrilled. Kardashian wore all smiles Monday afternoon while filming a holiday episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians with her family and retired Olympic figure skater Nancy Kerrigan. Her sister Kylie Jenner, who was also reportedly re- expecting, was present but did not ice skate with the group, according to People magazine. British Royals Prince William and Kay Middleton have announced a due date for baby number three. The couple confirmed Tuesday through Kensington Palace that the pregnant 35-year-old Duchess of Cambridge is expecting to give birth in April 2018. Kensington Palace tweeted alongside a photo of the pair. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are delighted to confirm that they are expecting a baby in April 2018. The announcement following this news, Prince William and Middleton will undertake an official visit to Norway and Sweden in early 2018. The trip was originally scheduled for November, but postponed due to Middleton's um, hypermissive gravatium, or severe morning sickness, according to the Daily Express. Prince William and Middleton are already parents to four-year-old son, Prince George, and two-year-old daughter, Princess Charlotte. Kensington Palace announced in September that the couple are expecting their third child. The palace said at the time, their Royal Highness, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, are very pleased to announce that the Duchess of Cambridge is expecting their third child. The Queen and members of both families are delighted with the news. NASCAR legend Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be a first-time dad. The 43-year-old stock car racing pro announced in Instagram post Monday that wife Amy Remen is pregnant with the baby girl. He captioned a photo of a pair of pink sneakers. Excited to share the wonderful news that at Mrs. Amy Earnhardt and I are expecting our first child. A little girl, we're both thrilled and can't wait to meet her. Earnhardt also shared a screenshot of a text message conversation with friend and fellow driver Landon Cassell on Twitter. Cassell's wife, Kate Linstead, uh, dreamt Earnhardt was expecting a daughter weeks before the news broke. Earnhardt wrote, So at Landon Castle, text me September 4th. We had just learned where we were expecting three days before this. Hard keeping that true from him until today. Earnhardt and Remen married in Lexington, North Carolina on New Year's Eve in December 2015 after getting engaged that June. The race car driver has previously voiced his desire for children in an interview with E! News. Uh, He shared, I would love to have kids. I always thought the greatest accomplishment in life was to raise a child aside from getting married in the first place. Everybody's telling me it's the greatest thing ever. I take their word for it. Earnhardt is the son of the late star car racing legend Dale Earnhardt, who died at the age of 49 in 2001 after colliding with another driver during the final lap of the Daytona 500 and the grandson of late race car driver Ralph Earnhardt. 
HDTV couple Ben and Erin Napier are going to be first-time parents. Erin announced in a blog post Sunday that she's seven months pregnant with the baby girl after teasing the news on Instagram. She captioned a photo of herself with Ben at scotsman.co and I have a secret to tell you. At Brooke Holds Davis, Erin said in her post that she learned she was pregnant on Mother's Day in May. She and Ben initially resolved to keep their pregnancy secret because it felt too close and important to share. Uh, the hometown star wrote, and I'm now almost seven months pregnant, and it has been thankfully a healthy and easy pregnancy. She's a girl, and we will name her after my grandmother. She added, my prayers for Helen is that she will be brave and kind. I pray that she will not be bullied the way I was, and that she will be a protector of the ones who are. I pray that she will learn that from her father, the protector who loves the people in his life so well. Hometown follows Ben and Aaron as they restore homes in the town of Laurel, Mississippi. The series premiered on HGTV in March and will soon return for a second season. Alicia Silverstone posed nude for a new billboard for PETA that is being displayed in Portland, Oregon. Located on Northwest 21st Avenue and West Burnside Street in Portland, the ad features the actress showing off her bare backside while holding a plastic sheep's mask. The tagline reads, in support of PETA's hashtag Wolf Free Winter campaign, I'd rather go naked than wear wool. PETA, whose motto is that animals are not ours to wear, have sought to expose the wool industry due to the abuse suffered by sheep. Silverstone appeared in a similar ad in November 2016, where she discussed her reasoning for getting involved with PETA in their fight against the use of wool. The clueless alum said at the time, it's just so fast, the shearing process, the sheep are cut, they're harmed, they're getting very seriously wounded, and there's no care for them when they're wounded, it's just move on to the next. She continues, why not make the leap? Says, I'm never going to buy wool again. Louis Tomlinson's toddler son showed a smile in a rare photo over the weekend. Brianna Jungworth posted a, a new f- picture of Freddie Rain, her 20-month-old son, with Tomlinson on her Instagram account Saturday. The picture shows Jungworth smiling as she put her arms around a standing Freddie. The toddler appears to be holding a pine cone in his hand as he grins for the camera. The snapshot received over 98,900 likes from Jungworth's 561,000 followers. Fans gushed about Freddie in the comments, with many remarking on his resemblance to Tomlinson. One person wrote, He's a double of at Lewis T91. It melts my heart. Another fan wrote, I also can't get over how much he looks like Lewis. Tomlinson and John Worf, who are no longer together, welcomed Freddie in January 2016. Tomlinson said in an interview with Sirius XM in January that he hopes to have more children in the future. The singer said of the fatherhood, it's affected how I am as a person a little bit. I'd like to say it's made me a bit more mature. I don't know if it's, if that's actually true. He added, definitely want more kids in the future, but at the moment, I've got Freddie and I'm trying to stay career driven. Tomlinson came to fame with the boy band One Direction, which started an indefinite hiatus in December 2015. He has since released the solo singles Just Hold On and Back to You. Music superstar Elton John will end his Las Vegas residency in 2018. The seven-year-old singer and musician's official Twitter account announced Monday that John will play his final million-dollar piano show at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace in May. The star's team wrote, All good things must come to an end. Elton plays his final million-dollar piano show at Caesars Palace next May. John, John has performed 450 shows at the Coliseum since February 2004, according to an accompanying post on his website. His million-dollar piano residency kicked off in September 2011 and will end May 19th. Caesars Palace President Gary Salensner said in a statement, For over a decade, Elton John and his band have graced the stage at the Coliseum at Caesars Palace, performing all the hits that have defined a generation. He lauded Elton John's residency at the Coliseum and has set the standard for those are for those are who have followed. We're incredibly grateful to Elton for allowing Caesar's Palace to be the home for his 450 memorable performances. Tickets for John's final 14 residency shows will go on sale on October 22nd. Sia shared on Twitter the details concerning her upcoming holiday album until every day is Christmas, including the release date and tracking list. The singer-songwriter wrote Monday alongside a photo of the album's cover that features frequent collaborator dancer Maddie Ziegler wearing a green and red wig. Sia's Making Your Holidays Brighter with Every Day is Christmas out November 17th. The track listing, which includes 10 original songs, includes the titles such as Snowman, Underneath the Christmas Light, Candy Cane Land, and Puppies Are Forever, along 
along with the lead singer Santa's Coming for Us. The Christmas album was first announced in August when Sia had signed a new deal with Atlantic Records after moving on from RCA Records. The 41 year old wrote the songs alongside producer Greg Kirsten. Kirsten previously told Entertainment Weekly, She is unbelievable. I don't know how she comes up with song lyric and melody ideas so quickly. She's like no one else. What really blows my mind is that she wrote these new Christmas stories in a way, and it's amazing that she did it. And finally, Google honored Mexican-American music icon Selena Quintanilla on the anniversary of her first studio album released with the new Doodle. Google's homepage featured artwork depicting the late entertainer and a giant play button that, when pressed, presented an animated look at the life and times of Selena. Dubbed the queen of Tejano music, Selena began singing at the age of nine with her older brother A.B. playing guitar and her sister Suzette playing drums to form Selena E. Los Dinos. Despite at first dealing with discrimination in a male-dominated music genre, uh, P- uh, Perla Campos wrote, Selena's talent, energy, and perseverance easily won the hearts of a rapidly growing fan base. Uh, she's, uh, Campos is a global marketing leader for Google Doodles. Selena was notably awarded the Tejano Music Award from, for Female Vocalist of the Year in 1986, and it released her first album, self-titled Selena, in 1989, which consistently straddled to the top of the Billboard charts before winning a Grammy for Best Mexican American Album in 1993, the first female and youngest Tejano artist to do so. Selena was shot to death by the president of her fan club, Yolanda Saldivar, in 1995. Campos continued, Selena became a beacon of inspiration and hope for the Latin immigrant and bicultural communities around the globe. Her story of embracing and celebrating all parts of her cultural heritage and preserving in the face of adversity forged an emotional connection with millions. Campos also added, Selena's legacy grows even larger with time. She continues to show Latins, immigrants, and bicultural communities around the world to be proud of who they are and to embrace their differences. Also to work hard for your dreams because doing so makes your achievements that much more meaningful. Selena's sister Zizette also shared her thoughts on the doodle her family helped create presents. Uh, she says this project is just yet another testament to the power of Selena's legacy, which is still going strong 22 years later. Selena has always transcended cultural boundaries, and having this doodle featuring a strong Latina woman on the homepage of Google around the world is a perfect example of that. And as your entertainment report for Wednesday, October 18th, 2017, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.